Did you know that many agile teams fail simply because their product backlog is not in good shape? And it becomes increasingly difficult when you're trying to learn JIRA and how the product backlog should fit within it. So in this video, I'm going to show you what a good product backlog looks like. And at the end, I'll show you five ways to indicate whether your items are sufficiently detailed or sprint ready, as we call it. So you ready? Let's get to it. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future JIRA tips and tricks. Okay, so what makes a good product backlog? A useful acronym to use is DEEP or D-E-E-P. Now I like this acronym, I also don't like it. I'll, I'll tell you why I don't like it in a little bit, but let's go through it first. So firstly, D. D stands for detailed appropriately. And what we're saying here is that there should be more detail for the items towards the top of the product backlog versus those at the bottom. So why do we do this? Well, think of it this way. The items towards the bottom of your product backlog are of lower priority, which means they won't be done for quite some time. If they're not gonna be done for quite some time, then what could happen? It's likely those details will end up changing. So if we put in a lot of effort and detail into those lower priority product backlog items, but they're gonna end up changing anyway, then that's wasted effort and we could have mobilized the team in a better way. However, we still want to see the bigger picture. We still want to understand what we might be delivering in future. Hence, we still need those lower priority product backlog items. They just have less information and they're more like placeholders, at least initially. So that's D, detailed appropriately. Next is E, E for estimated. If we don't estimate the work, then how can we determine the return on investment and in turn prioritize effectively? Next is E for emergent. When practicing agile, we don't assume we know everything up front. As we deliver the work, we're going to receive feedback and learn. So we want to allow this product backlog to evolve or emerge over time. And as we better understand what our customers want, uh, we'll adjust it accordingly. Lastly is P for prioritized. The product backlog should be prioritized, helping the team focus on what's most valuable to your customer and avoiding being distracted by what is not a priority. Okay, so now you know what attributes make a good product backlog. Let me show you how we make our JIRA product backlog deep. To demonstrate, I'm going to use the product backlog that's part of the sandbox data I provided in the last video. The sandbox data is a great way to get started with JIRA and to play around with its features. If you don't have the data, you can go to Access Agile apps.com slash sample data. I suggest you take the time to import the sandbox data so that you can follow along, play around with this data and uh, not mess up your current working backlog. Okay, assuming you've done that, let's go. So here's the product backlog view in JIRA with the sandbox data I just mentioned. I should also mention that this is a JIRA cloud instance using a company managed project with the Scrum template. The first thing we want to do is make sure that this product backlog is detailed appropriately. So what does that mean? As I mentioned, we wanna have more detail for the items towards the top that we are going to do in the nearer term and less detail for the items towards the bottom. Before we get to adding detail to these product backlog items, we want to understand the product backlog at a more broader level so, so we can see the bigger picture. A useful way to do this is to actually use what's called epics in JIRA. Now the term epics is a confusing one because people define it in the agile world a little differently from the way it actually works within JIRA. So 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to describe epics the way Jira defines it. And the way Jira defines it is as a collection of product backlog items. So to see our epics, we can click over here on the left. And you can see here, I have this list of epics. They describe my product broadly. For example, I have one here called account management, which contains all the product backlog items related to signing up and creating an account. I have another here called sign up page, which has all my product backlog items related to creating the, the, the actual sign up page. So at a glance, we can see the broad brushstrokes of this product backlog, and we can also see how we're progressing with each. For example, if I click on this Chevron there, you can see the number of issues that are associated to this epic, of those, which ones have been completed, which ones don't have an estimate, and also the total estimate for all the product backlog items within that epic. Okay, so my tip here is I like to keep these epics to a minimum. You can see there's not a whole lot of screen real estate. Also, I like to keep the names to not be too long, maybe at most about 20 characters or so, because when you go over that, it starts to get cut off over in this product backlog view here, and then it gets confusing and, and hard to read. Now, when you click on the epics here, it will actually filter and display only those product backlog items that are associated with it. So to see all our product backlog items, we simply go back to all issues, and then you'll see it go back to the original view. Okay, let's talk about how we add detail to those high priority requirements. So we wanna start from the top and make our way down. A common question I usually get is how far down or how far ahead should we be refining these product backlog items? We recommend you stay one to two sprints ahead. So in other words, you want to refine those product backlog items that the team will be working on in the next sprint and potentially those that are in the sprint after that. This is sometimes referred to as rolling wave analysis. So what detail do we add? First, we wanna make sure we have a description of the product backlog item. The most popular format used by Agile teams is the user story. And you can see here, I have a user story and some acceptance criteria. This is a great starting point to kick off a discussion. You wanna make sure that you've involved both stakeholders in the creation of these descriptions and your delivery team to ensure they assess it for feasibility and propose potential solutions. So this user story is a placeholder for a conversation to occur. And then through those conversations, we refine and add more detail to it. As an agile coach, I strongly encourage that you make those conversations face to face. Having face to face conversations ensures that you and your team are communicating as effectively as possible. If we instead communicate by phone or even worse, by throwing emails back and forth, then we lose a big part of how we communicate as humans. Uh, that is through body language, facial expressions, and tone of voice. So if possible, always try to have face-to-face -face conversations, whether it's in person or using a tool like Zoom or Microsoft Teams. While the description is great, it's typically not enough. Teams need more information to really understand what needs to be done. This additional information could be in the form of mock-ups, wireframes, business rules, process diagrams, and so on. So how do we include these additional details in JIRA? We use the attachment feature. For example, let's imagine my team has spent some time creating a wireframe uh, to gain an understanding about how this product should look. We simply click this attach button and here, my sample wireframe, I can open that up and it will attach to this product backlog item. 
So now my team can refer to that if they need more information. Again, we can attach any additional information that's required. It could be business rules in a document, test data in a spreadsheet. Uh, I even met one team that used to record interviews with customers and attach those interviews, the actual videos. So it's really up to you and your team. The goal here is to provide the team with what they need to achieve the outcome that we're after. Lastly, we want to estimate this product backlog item, but in Agile, we want to do this collectively with the team. By doing it collectively with the team, we're going to achieve a more accurate result. So how do we determine what the estimate is? The most popular technique with Agile teams is to use what's called planning poker. The idea behind planning poker is we use the wisdom of a crowd to triangulate in on an estimate. And in this situation, the crowd is the Agile team. Now, I'm not going to go over what planning poker is in this video and how it works. I'll create another video on that in future, so make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, but if you would like to read about it, I'll place a link in the description below. So let's assume the team agrees on an estimate using this planning poker approach. Where do we note down this estimate in JIRA? We use this field called story points, and you can see that just by scrolling down below. You see it here. Again, if you don't know what story points are, check out the link in the description. JIRA will use this field to generate reports on how your team is tracking. Lastly, you should assign a version to your product backlog item. So you can do that by using this field below here, fix versions. So there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can assign a version here in this field, or if you like, there's also this version panel here. If you click on that, it'll pop out and you can see that I have two versions here in the sample data. And what I can actually do is I can, I can filter this view based on which version I want to look at. So if I want to see what I've got for version one, I click on that. If I want to see version two, I click on it. So to go back to see all issues, just click on all issues at the top. And here what I can do is I can use these versions to, to help me stay focused and my team. So let's say I want to be only refining the items for version one, uh, and I don't want to get distracted by version two. So obviously what do I do? I filter it. And here I might say, well, hang on, for some of these items, we're not going to do them in version one. We'll delay them till version two. So to ensure that me and my team don't get distracted, I'm going to remove it from that version. So for example, let's say canceling a booking, I'll leave that to version two here and out it goes. Okay, so I'm not distracted anymore. So that's going to be one of the key parts of doing product backlog refinement well, is to make sure that you're only focusing on what's important, the right amount of detail at the right time and not getting distracted with things that can be done later. So you can use the versions to, to help you gain that level of focus. Okay, so in summary, what you wanna to do to refine your product backlog items effectively is make sure, again, each product backlog item towards the top here has a description, perhaps a user story. You also attach any additional information like wireframes, mockups, business rules, etc. Apply an estimate and lastly, make sure it is associated to a version and an epic as well. So once you have that level of refinement with your product backlog items, we would typically call it sprint ready. In other words, it's actually ready to be brought to an upcoming sprint planning session to be planned for and then delivered in that upcoming sprint. Now, as part of product backlog refinement, we want a way to signify that these items are sprint ready. This helps focus our product backlog refinement efforts and ensure we're staying one to two sprints ahead. So how do we indicate this in JIRA? I'm going to show you 
five options. First option is probably the most popular that's out there and it's actually to use the sprint feature of Jira. So yes, uh, it's not using it as Jira intended, but look, it can work really well. So what do I mean? Uh, what we can do is we can create a sprint here. So if I create a sprint, for example, and this might be my first sprint. Now, typically what you would do is you drag items into that sprint uh, when you're doing sprint planning, but we're not going to do that for this because here we're talking about whether an item is sprint ready or not. So what we actually want to do is we'll, we'll leave that sprint. We will create another sprint, but this isn't actually going to be a sprint that we start. Instead, we're going to call this, you guessed it, sprint ready product backlog items. And then what we do is when these items are ready, to be brought into another sprint. They've got their description, the version, um, and the estimate. We just drag it into there. Okay, so here we're saying that initial signup page, it's ready to go. We can bring it into the next sprint. Now, when that happens, what we typically do is we would drag it up into that sprint and, and add it to that. Okay, so we just put items into this sprint ready PBI sprint. Uh, and look, it can work well. You can see here very clearly, these items are ready, these items are still being refined. Uh, so look, it can be good, but also sometimes it can cause your priorities to go uh, out of whack a little bit. So for example, let's say remove car listing all the way down here. Maybe the team managed to get that ready on time, so they uh, drag it up here, but then it's indicating that remove car listing is of higher priority and higher value than these items down here, which actually isn't the case. Second option is to use the flag feature in Jira. Now the flag feature, if you read the documentation on it, is to flag an item for your team, so to bring it to their attention. Uh, so if you're not using it yet for another reason, uh, it can work to indicate sprint ready items as well. So option two here is to just right click and select add flag. Now it'll ask you to put a comment. You don't have to, but I'll just put sprint ready and we'll add. Okay, and now we can see that we have that flag there. So let's say again, we're going through refining these product backlog items. We just mark the ones that are sprint ready. Uh, and then we can easily see, okay, these are ready to be brought into the next sprint. A third option is to use labels. Jira has this field called label. Let me just show you. So I'll open this one up here. If I scroll down, uh, you can see I've got labels here. So what I can do is I could add a, a label to this, right? Uh, sprint ready. So I could just type in sprint dash ready. There we go. And it adds in. And by the way, you can't put spaces in the label name. That's why I had the dash there. So now I've added the sprint ready label to this product backlog item. Now it won't immediately show on this product backlog view. So what you actually need to do is you need to add it uh, to what Jira calls the card layout. Now to do that, what we do is we go up to the three dots here on the top right and we click board settings. Now here in board settings, I'm going to click on card layout. And then here at card layout, what we want to do is we want to select l the labels here from this list. So I select it there and I hit the add button. Now the labels will show on the product backlog view. So let's check out what it's done. If I go back now, uh, there we go, right? I can see that I've got sprint ready there. Uh, now, obviously, look, it's not the clearest, not the best, but otherwise that's a third option. Okay, fourth option is similar to the label, uh, except instead of showing the label on the product backlog, we can actually set a card color or make 
add a little color here to this view. So how do we do that? Well, we go up to the board settings again, and I will click on card colors. Now here, what we can do is we can base the whether a, a card color is shown depending on certain criteria here. So you can you can select any one of these. But for example, what I could do is select queries. And let's say I use it in conjunction with the label, I could type in a J, JQL here of label labels equal to sprint ready. Okay. And I click add. Now if I go back to the board and you see I've got I've got this red color selected we can obviously pick any color but uh, let's say I pick red. Now I go back to the board and now I can see this red color here. Okay, because I've got sprint ready set as the label. Okay, so if I go down to like say log in to account and now I say yep this one's ready to go. It's well refined and I select sprint ready. Then I go back to the view and there you go. Okay, I can see it's red there as well. So that's the fourth option to see whether an item is ready uh, or not and well refined. Okay, the last option is the most advanced and that is to customize your workflow. In this case, we want to add an extra step to the workflow to indicate that the product backlog item is sprint ready. Now to do this, we go up and click on the cog icon here. Okay, we click on the cog icon, then we go to issues. Now from issues, we're going to go down first to statuses, because we need to add a status for the sprint ready uh, item. So what we do is we go add status, I uh, will call it sprint, sprint ready. Um, of course, you can give it an icon and uh, perhaps set it to a category. But what I'll do is I'll just leave it as to do. I click add. Okay, that status is now in there. And then what I'm going to do is go over to workflows. Now here, I need to select the workflow that my project is using. So I believe it should be this one, my sandbox. So I'll edit this one. And then here you can see I've got the basic stock standard workflow here. Uh, by the way, you'll need admin permissions to be able to do this. So we just go up here, click add status. What I will do is click on sprint ready. And just to make it easier for myself, I'm going to click this checkbox, which means that any status can go to this. But obviously, you can make it more restrictive and say that, look, it has to start in to do, then go to sprint ready, then to in progress. Um, up to you. I'll create another video on that in future. Okay, so now what we need to do is don't forget to uh, publish this. So I will click the publish draft there. Uh, away it goes. Okay, now I go back to my project, the sandbox here, let's go to the product backlog. And what we can actually do here is we can go to the item. And we can say, hey, um, it's now sprint ready. So I select it from the status list there. But, but of course, we can't actually see that yet on the product backlog view. So how do we see it? How do we make it appear? Just like how we did it with the, the label or the card color. So we go up to here, click board settings. And then for example, uh, back on card layout, what I'm going to do is select status. Yeah, click that. Okay, and if I go back to the board now, now you'll notice that initial sign up page has actually disappeared. And that's because that sprint ready status hasn't actually been mapped onto this view just yet. So how do we do that? How do we map that new status? Well, we go back to board settings. And we go here, we go to columns. And you can see here, I've got this unmapped statuses, sprint ready here. 
So what we'll do is we'll drag it into to do. Now I go back to the board and there it is. Okay, so that's the final option there. You can set the status here. We can see, hey, that's sprint ready. Once this one's done, same thing, set it to sprint ready. Uh, and then we know how far down the product backlog we have refined product backlog items. And remember, the advice here is to try to not go all the way down, but to go down far enough that you've got enough sprint ready items for your for one sprint ahead, uh, up to maybe two sprints ahead. So that way you're always staying ahead of the team. You've always got sprint ready items there and your team is never receiving any product backlog items that are insufficiently detailed. Okay, so there you have it. Five ways to indicate whether your product backlog items are sufficiently refined for the upcoming sprint and meet the DEEP criteria. Oh, and I did mention that while I like the DEEP ac acronym, I also don't like it. So why don't I like it? Well, DEEP implies lengthy. And I do meet a lot of product owners or agile teams who have very long product backlogs. This can be a huge distraction for them. So ideally, uh, I like to keep backlogs to be no more than 80 items. From my experience, that's a manageable number. And if you have more than that, well, I have a few final tips for you. Firstly, you could archive everything after the 80th, move it to another list. Uh, this could be another project, product backlog, or perhaps you filter it out of the product backlog view. Alternatively, check out our blog post on declaring product backlog bankruptcy. I'll place a link to that in the description below. Or finally, you can check out an app that we created called Agile Backlog Tools. Uh, we use this with many teams to help them get their product backlogs in good shape. You can either click on the link that I'll show on the screen now uh, or check it out in the description below. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to check out more JIRA tips and tricks to come.